X-Men right now. <laughs> so, as you may know, X-Men Days of Future Past came out last night. Um, not at midnight, because I went to a 10 o'clock showing. <sighs> it was fucking epic. First of all, out of the four Marvel movies that we're getting this year, Marvel-related movies, um, from Marvel, we had Captain America Winter Soldier, from Sony, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, from Fox, X-Men Days of Future Past, and then from Marvel, we also have Guardians of the Galaxy. Days of Future Past has been my most anticipated movie of all of them. Ever since I heard they were making it, I was beyond words. It's like, I need to watch this. I, I did read the comic uh, a long time ago. I read it again maybe about a year ago when they first announced that it came out. But I did see the animated version a bunch. But the movie is better than both of them. So, it started out in the very beginning. You got the original cast... So it's kind of like, this movie is like a sequel to X-Men 3, and it's also a sequel to X-Men First Class. But I think more so, it's, an, or it's a sequel to X-Men 3. And X-Men 3 gets a lot of shit. <clears throat> I actually like X-Men 3, you know. Um, everybody just rags on it. Yeah, I enjoyed X-Men 3, you know. Um... The end where Wolverine has to kill Jean, you know, that that's like kind of like a very emotional scene. But as as a whole, I enjoyed X-Men 3, unlike a lot of people. So this movie, um, you at the beginning of this movie you got uh Iceman, you got Kitty Pride, or not Kitty, yeah, Kitty Pride, Shadow Cat. Is that her name? Shadow Cat. Who in the comic is the one who goes back into time. Instead of Wolverine. But you got them. You got Blink. Uh, there's Bishop. Uh, Colossus. Magneto. Wolverine. Uh, and Storm. A couple other people. They're fighting the Sentinels. And the Sentinels are... Uh, they're more or less... Like if you've seen... The, the animated version is basically like Nimrod, who is like the ultimate sentinel, and he can like... So when Iceman is hitting these sentinels with all his ice, they turn to fire. Uh, when Sunspot is throwing fire at them, they turn to ice. And even at one point, they turn into um, Emma Frost, like in from the last movie, where skin turns to diamonds. But they're on some mission where they're running from the set. I think in the beginning, you know, they're on a mission... I think this is that rogue scene where, you know, they got cut, where they didn't really need rogue in it. So I think that kind of ties into that scene. But then, um, Professor X, Magneto, and, and Wolverine, they all show up, and, uh, Shadowcat has this premise where she's going, well, she can send Bishop back into time, like, four days to warn you know, the uh, the group of Sentinel Techs. So Magneto and Professor X have this plan where they're going to send Professor X back into time to stop all of this from happening, for, to prevent the world from getting this way, basically. Um, then they, they come to the conclusion Professor X isn't going to do that because it's, it's going to do so much to the body. So they send Mag Wolverine. Instead, now when I first saw that Brian Singer was back in this, I was like, okay, you know, now it's gonna be a movie centered around Wolverine. Wolverine is my favorite Marvel character, so I don't really mind that he has a lot of the screen time. But as the X Men, you know, it's a it's a group, and in this movie, it did really well with that. It wasn't all Wolverine. So Wolverine goes back into time. He goes to the mansion. He finds a. Uh, Hank, the beast, who's in a human form, he's come up with some kind of um, antidote that suppresses his mutant powers, and Professor X is there, 
and he's like, uh, I'd say he's almost like a junkie with this stuff, you know, because he shoots the stuff and it makes him walk, but he loses his all his powers. He doesn't want to help Wolverine. He doesn't want to do nothing because he's in a state of depression over uh, Mystique leaving him, and as well as Magneto. He's you know pissed off that Magneto left the group. Um, you know, a bunch of people have died. A bunch of the cast from the first movie. Uh, I don't want to get too much into it without spoiling it for you guys. But, um, so once Wolverine's finally able to convince Professor Xavier to help him stop the future, you know, they gotta break Magneto out of prison. Oh, and that is when Quicksilver comes into play. So I know I'm kind of ruining some stuff, but all this stuff is in, in the trailers. So I won't say anything that's not already in the trailer. And Quicksilver, the highlight of this movie. He's hilarious. His scenes, his scenes are just, they're, they're, cra they're funny. They had me cracking up the whole time. So once all that scene is over, they actually also kind of hint at Magneto being Quicksilver's dad, which in the comics, as you all, you should know, Quicksilver is Magneto's son. So, uh, like, when Magneto reveals his powers, Quicksilver's like, oh, you know, my mom used to know somebody that could do something like that. Also in the movie, they ask him about his powers. They ask Quicksilver about his powers, and he's like, what are you talking about? You know, what powers? Like, I think he kind of, he doesn't really know that he's a mutant. He just thinks, oh, you know, I'm just fast. Can anybody else catch that, or was that just me? So, after all that, then they got to go find Mystique and prevent what she's going to go do, which causes the Sentinels to fuck up the future. All right, I'm, I'm spoiling this too much for you guys. Um, so... Overall, I enjoyed this movie uh, probably ten times more than I thought I was. And I had high hopes for this movie. I just knew this movie was going to be the shit. And it was even better. Uh, I want to go see it tonight, but again, I don't know if I'll be able to make it tonight. But I'm definitely going to see this movie in theaters probably three or four times. Uh, this is... I think this is the best X-Men movie ever. I'd say it's better than X-Men 2. Yes. Um, I say this movie is up there with the Avengers. It is It is that damn good. I really do hope that it smashes all kinds of box office records and makes ass loads of cash because I want him to just continue on with this. I don't want him to stop. Um, but when it ends and then the time travel fixes everything in the future... I don't really know how they're going to go on with... Because they're supposed to make an X-Men or a Wolverine 3. So now that the future has changed, I don't know if they're going to do um, Wolverine in the past. You know, another Wolverine movie or a Wolverine in the future. Because I think they're kind of like retiring the future characters, you know, the original cast, and going with the younger cast for the newer movies. Uh... I mean, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. And then we have the after credit scene, which is not the rumored after credit scene that was on the line uh, a couple months ago where Magneto gets possessed by the spirit of Ensabonur, also known as Apocalypse. It's a, uh, it's a really good scene. I mean, if you're a fan of the comics, you'll get it. There are some people in the theaters who are like, who is that? Uh, you know, didn't know what they were doing. Or they didn't know anything about what was going on. So, if you have seen this movie, let me know what you thought about it down below. I think this movie fucking kicked ass. And I can't wait to go see it again. I give it an A++. And if you're having doubts about seeing this, go see this. Go see it tonight. Tonight. Alright, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this movie. Or if you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. 
And, uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Stay true and stay blue.